Hey Priyal, yes. uh, it's uh, you know good to have you on the call. Uh, nice to connect with you. So let's uh, discuss the campaign structure. So just yes. uh, begin with what you want to ask. Okay. So yes. uh, hello, hello, Akash. Uh, let's start uh, with the campaign structure, and mm -hmm. uh, we are going to discuss about uh, where, how to launch a campaign for uh, new launch new launch products or already the products that were existed uh, on the Amazon. So let's start uh, with some of the campaign structure, basic campaign structure discussions. Yeah. So first question is, let's go like if a product is newly launched, then uh, like what would be your strategy? Uh, how would you launch the campaign? Uh, talking about the campaign structure, if the, you know, uh, you're starting from scratch uh, from a new seller, mm -hmm. uh, you have listed your products. Uh, so you could, you know, just begin with starting two campaigns. One should be the auto campaign and second should be the manual campaign. Uh, in the manual campaign, some, uh, some uh, you know advertisers might follow uh, three ad groups like create a campaign with three ad groups with uh, like phrase match campaign exact match campaign and broad match campaign but uh, particularly i don't suggest using that uh, uh, you know method of uh, structuring what i do is uh, i create separate campaign for the uh, each match type like uh, for broad match i create a separate campaign uh, similarly for phrase match and uh, the, uh, uh, and the broad match or, and the exact match. The reason why I do is uh, because, you know, in a campaign, like, you know, you have three ad groups and the campaign daily budget is like $50. So they might be, you know, uh, you, they provide you a lot of uh, results, uh, different res results, which could be, uh, you know, you might be getting from different ad groups. Uh, the exact match uh, ad group might, you know, eat a lot of your budget. Similarly, the phrase match might, you know, uh, may may eat or may, may not consume the lot of budget, but you have to give equal opportunity to you know uh, all the match types. So you don't place uh, you know each ad group into a same same campaign so that you know uh, the budget gets consumed uh, within one ad group or the other. So what what we try to do is we we give equal opportunity to every uh, match type uh, by placing them into a separate campaign. So this way the granularity of the you know. Uh, this would help you in the uh, optimization mostly. Uh, you could, you know, identify the campaign for broad match, exact match, and phrase match, and you can, you can, you know, uh, easily transfer the keywords. Uh, the system, you can study the system report from auto campaigns. You could, you know, harvest some uh, good search terms, uh, especially uh, search terms which do have a good, a good, good number of clicks, good number of impression, good CTR, and do result in good conversions. You could, uh, you know. Uh, have a good, uh, you know, uh, idea to, you know, transfer this keyword into, uh, you know, depending on your usage or your uh, strategy, you could transfer it into a, whether a broad match campaign, depending on the number of conversions you have. Uh, if you have good conversions from that uh, system, you could uh, directly transfer that to the exact match, but I suggest you go with phrase match initially. I'm not, you know, uh, very fond of broad match because it might, you know, attract a lot of uh, irrelevant clicks too. So what I do in general, I, for myself, I prefer uh, starting the campaigns with phrase match. And when I talk about phrase match, uh, I use, uh, you know, I extract some good high intent keywords. Now, when I say high intent keywords, uh, high intent keywords, uh, you know, basically, you know, con contributes to all the uh, description of the product, like the attributes of the product. So uh, it could be, you know, long tail keywords. You could, you know, uh, it, the high intent keywords are equal to the long tail keywords because the uh, intention of the shoppers are very clear uh, in those keywords. So it should match the uh, you know the product attributes. So this is this is the way I follow the campaign structure. Okay, and uh, when you say you find about long tail keywords, so like uh, is there any tools you use for the long tail keywords, uh, or is there any strategy that you filter out keywords? What you use for that? Yeah, you could you could you know find a lot of uh, uh, keyword research tools. Uh, there are multiple keyword research tools. Uh, you could follow the Amazon suggestions too, uh, but you need to check that uh, the uh, keywords uh, which you are you know adding to your campaigns are much relevant or closely relevant. Uh, I don't usually uh, you know add uh, more than twenty keywords to my campaign. Uh, 
depending it totally depends on the budget but just to make sure that the you know bidding goes smoothly uh, and uh, the campaigns perform uh, really good uh, we don't you know uh, stuff the campaigns with the keywords uh, you don't have to you know uh, go with 100 keywords at, in the same campaign when you have a budget of like 20 dollars or 30 dollars it doesn't make sense you have to give enough budget to each keyword so that it you know has good budget to play with so each keyword should have at least you know like uh, three dollars or five dollars to play with so make sure you have good budget when and you have good number of keywords so each keyword has good opportunity to spend and uh, show you some results so it, it can gather some impressions and clicks and probably make conversions so uh, coming to the uh, question that uh, what uh, tool i use uh, i usually uh, usually use the most popular tool helium 10 uh, the helium uh, is, uh, you know, uh, keeps going on, you know, uh, keeps uh, updating the keyword data. So you mm -hmm. can, uh, while, you know, the keyword research, I do keyword research, follow up some uh, pattern, like I do check the magnet IV score. Uh, the magnet IV score is, uh, you know, uh, simply the number of uh, advertisers who are, you know, uh, using that keyword in their campaigns. So it shows the num the competition on that keyword. How many uh, other sellers are using the same keyword? So uh, the keyword which have you know good search volume and same, at the same time it has you know less competition. So you try to you know get impressions and clicks on the, the, that keyword, uh, which could you know improve the uh, sales rank on uh, that particular keyword. Like uh, when we consider the optimization part, if some keyword is you know uh, getting a multiple clicks, like it's more than 10 clicks but still no conversion not like 20 clicks depending on the product uh, the product category do make a lot of sense in this uh, in this regard uh, but like if it if it has you know a lot of clicks but still not showing results still not you know uh, uh, you know generating any sale so i might consider pause that keyword because it might be having a lot of uh, you know competition maybe maybe if 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 the you know um, our uh, product is retail ready then it should be, you know, delivering the conversion. But so it is not con delivering any conversion, I might consider the uh, consider it pausing because, you know, we have to, you know, uh, consider the algorithm which Amazon follows. Uh, if you are not getting any conversion on that keyword for a long time, you should consider it. Uh, you know, you know, either you should add it to negatives or you should pause it. So that's why, uh, you. you know, you should follow this uh, procedure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, while creating campaigns, uh, we do have, uh, after adding keywords and everything, we do have placement types, right? There are three types of placements. So yeah. how would you go with that? Like, how would you decide what placement percentage you should go ahead with while starting the campaign? And what if campaign is performing, then how do you decide that? The, uh, the placements do make a lot of sense to me uh, when it comes to, you know, ranking your product on the search results. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, getting to the top of search results is the, uh, you know, the best priority for me. Uh, if you have good ratings, uh, then it's must that you you always, you know, give good percentage, the highest percentage of placement uh, bid to the top of search results. Uh, if you don't, uh, you know, have that good percentage of, sorry, the uh, good ratings, then I might, you know, not give the highest percentage, but, you know, I would, you know, try to do some, uh, give, go through some other strategy uh, to make the appearance on some, you know, like competitor uh, listing or on the, uh, some other, you know, category uh, uh, targeting uh, parameter. But for when you have, you know, some uh, good reviews and ratings on your product, then I might, you know, consider uh, giving it the best possible uh, bid uh, to getting the top of search results. Uh, rest when it comes to the product page or the uh, uh, other uh, placement uh, there could be you know uh, multiple ways we, we could do that but i can go with you know initially i can you know go with 10 percent then uh, slowly increase the bid if it is still not making any conversion but until uh, threshold uh, it reaches a threshold i might you know consider lowering the bid then okay and what do you think like what uh, kind of placement gives us the best results yeah, whether I, it is top of search product detail page or rest of search yeah like i said uh, totally depends on your product category uh, the products uh, i've seen uh, uh, the products with the good ratings and uh, reviews uh, might get good conversions in comparison to the you know the ones those are having the top of search results 
you have to be distinguished when you come to be come on the top of search results if you don't look good in your top of search results then uh, you, people not might you know consider you purchasing your product so at least you should have you know competitive uh, reviews and ratings and competitive pricing too uh, then it might make sense to me that you should uh, you know uh, make the top of search results uh, otherwise uh, if you don't have that competitive price i know there there might be different marketing concepts like premium pricing and other things but amazon is about you know uh, the amazon algorithm is totally based on providing the uh, buyers the shoppers the best uh, shopping experience so the shopping experience involves the multiple parameters in which the prices and the reviews and ratings and various other thing comes like coupons and the uh, you know uh, other uh, promotions do come and that do make a lot of sense to the advertisers so okay. when it comes to you know uh, planning on the top of search results i might you know consider making my product look very competitive look good uh, in 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 comparison to the you know uh, the uh, competitor listings yes uh, good enough uh, yes so next uh, is uh, like uh, how you decide the bid type strategies we do have three types of bid uh, strategies like down only up and down and fixed bids so do you decide it according to the campaign or according to the type of the product or its category uh it depends on the situation depends on the product category uh if you you know depends on the budget uh, budget part too uh like uh, uh, uh i don't uh, i can't recall any example uh, like uh, you know uh, user scenario or uh, live scenario which i could you know explain it right now but i can definitely tell that uh, i mostly uh, let the amazon's algorithm work on that because uh, there is some you know ambiguity uh, between the bidding strategy uh yeah when when it, when it comes to you know handling the echoes i might always consider the bid down uh, strategy only uh i don't want my echoes to i want i don't want my you know uh, echoes to increase i would consider uh, bidding up uh, down only uh but if if you are you know new uh, ad, uh, you know you're starting your new campaign for your products you could consider up and down you could see observe, let let the campaigns uh, run through the course of time at least you should wait for 4 to 6 weeks uh for to 6 weeks you can get enough data to study whether uh, the increasing bids are good or decreasing bids is bid is good uh, you could you could you know uh, identify the uh, the best possible threshold for your uh, products or what the what is the best possible threshold bid for your products uh, which might which you might consider that you should not uh, be increasing bid more than this level so uh, so there are different scenarios like this uh, so uh, i believe uh, once you have identified the, uh, the the impression impression share or the you know session share uh, like various other metrics you uh, try to you know uh, formulate in the uh, situation and you try to identify the causes and the reasons uh, for the uh, conversions or the best possible bid then i believe uh, you can go with any of the strategy possible uh, mostly i follow up and down when i start from scratch Uh, once i have good data i i i analyze that data and i try to use the uh, bidding strategy accordingly then okay yeah okay okay good uh, it was amazing so yeah, now you. if you have any questions you can uh, even ask and we can discuss on that yeah i am good for now i believe uh, uh, you have a great experience in amazon ads i believe uh, i don't i don't have any questions but I I I might if I I I might, I might come uh, I might you know come across any question I do let you know. Uh, uh, thank you sure. for having me. Uh, thank you for having the call. Uh, anything else you would like to discuss? I'm open for the uh, questions. We are good to go, right? Yeah. Okay, we are good to go then. Uh, so it was amazing having you, and uh, you. you are an PPC expert. You have handled lots of uh, amazing clients and have given them amazing growth. so thank you akash and it was nice having you on the platform